grab your weary wings Even angels by the dust Even angels by the dust Oh, some might say something's wrong with me But baby, it's the little thing Oh, baby, <laughs> I work hard for this. You and your hair there. <laughs> Hi. Well, this is the first time that we have played Firefly the role playing game online. And we're using the brand new set of rules from Margaret Weiss Productions and one of their pre published scenarios, Friends in Low Places, written by Monica Vanatelli. I'm uh, Matthew, and I'm the GM for the day. Uh, Craig, could you, could you tell everybody who you are? Uh, I'm Craig, various people know me as Hoodoo Voodoo Online, and today I'll be pay, playing the lovely Kaylee. Dave? Hi, uh, I'm Dave, uh, and I'm playing the even lovelier Jane today. And Jamie? Hi, everybody, I'm Jamie, I'm going to be playing uh, Malcolm Reynolds. And Tony? Hi there, I'm Tony, and tonight, Matthew, I shall be playing a <laughs> book. <laughs> Excellent. Right, well, I, we were just uh, talking a little bit before we uh, went online about the mechanics of the game. We'll explore some of those as we go through as well. But I think one of the key differences between a narrative game as Cortex Plus is, and if you like, a more traditional tactical game, is this emulates a television program as opposed to trying to simulate real life. So you don't get the granularity of actions that a lot of more traditional games have. Um, a lot of things is sort of a, a, a lot of the uh, uh, environmental impact of the game for cover and things like that are absorbed into a, a single role. First of all, though, let me fill you guys in on the story. You've come to the Serenity Valley. Uh, the scene of Mao's conversion from a believer into the cynical hard bastard that he is today, the one we all know and love. Um, you've come here to meet one of Mao's old war buddies, Monty, uh, and to just uh, exchange news. And you've come to the town of Serenity View. Now, Serenity View is kind of a bit of a new town, effectively, uh, overlooking the Serenity Valley. Uh, it's got the Alliance Unification War Museum, uh, dedicated to the Battle of Serenity and the defeat of the independence as its major tourist attraction. But you've come instead to, um, to a bar called Whistler's Bar and Grill, which is where Monty's crew said you'd find him waiting for you. When you get in there, though, you see Monty's a bit worse for wear and uh, looking a bit sullen and doesn't even notice you come in. So what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to go to the bar and get a drink. I'm going to go and greet him. Monty isn't my mate, so, uh, <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, leave it up to you. I'm just going to sit quietly in the corner because I really approve of his drinking malarkey. Really? I'm going to come over and uh, put my hand on his shoulder and uh, say hi. <clears throat> um, he starts uh, almost um, surprised when you touch him, and his eyes are red-rimmed. It looks like he's been crying. Um, Mal, I'm assuming you're wearing your trademark brown coat, aren't you? Most certainly. You'll notice that you're getting a few looks from some of the locals uh, wearing that coat. It's not unification day again, is it? <laughs> and uh, Monty says, uh, I don't do accents. Well, I do occasionally, but not very well, so forgive me. So what Monty said. Mal, it's, uh, it's good to see you, I guess, although bad news seemed to come in advance of you. Last time it was that devil woman, Yolanda, and uh, this time my wife has gone missing. Gone missing? When did she go missing? Uh, not not that long ago. I I I don't know. I, she didn't come back to the ship last night, and uh, I don't know where she is. I've looked all over town for her. I come here to drown my sorrows, he says, taking a big glug of delicious beer. Very nice. Well, how how can we help? I mean, this is uh, 
this, this is something that you obviously distressed about. Let's um, let's let, let's sit down and talk about it. I'll I'll, I'll get us another another couple of drinks. Um, okay, you're ordering a couple of drinks. Uh, the woman behind the bar is quite a friendly woman. She looks with some sympathy at uh, at Monty and um, uh, says, uh, "Daisy was a good woman, Monty. I'm sure. I'm sure she ain't done you wrong. Uh, there's 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 going to be a, a reasonable explanation of this. I'm sure." Uh, we'll find her for you. We'll find her. Now you notice she's also eyeing some of the um, locals who are uh, making snide comments about people who wear brown coats. Uh, Jane, did you say you were no book? You said you were sitting in the corner. Didn't yes, you? I did. Uh, a guy comes up to you and uh, says, "Hello, Shepherd." Uh, are you here to see Shepard Carson? Uh, no, 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 I'm just just passing through. Just passing through, taking a rest on our, on our journey. Have you been to the chapel yet? I have not been to the chapel, no. We've literally just arrived in town. Ah. Um, well, the chapel's a good chapel, and... Wiley Carson's a good man. You should you should go and meet him. Meanwhile, though, while you're saying, well, you're having that very civilized conversation, somebody has approached uh, Jane, and um, he's saying, uh, "You smell like a brown coat." I'm going to stand up, look down on him, uh, and say. Get your garam face out of mine. <laughs> okay, well that I think deserves a roll. So what you're trying to do here, okay, is, broadly speaking, uh, you know, combat can be physical combat, but it could actually just be, you know, a battle of wills, as you're demonstrating now. So you're looking to intimidate this bloke into yep. submission and scare him off. Yeah, can and I how you do that? Is Using well, have a look at your character sheet and tell me. Well, I have, uh, yeah, I have a crude distinction, which allows me to double influence when I'm trying to imi uh, intimidate or scare folks with. Okay. Uh, maybe that doesn't work here, actually. Well, well it might do. Uh, it sounds exactly what you're trying to do. You you've used your weight. So, what's your influence skill? Is six. Six. Okay. Um, now you've used your stature to try and intimidate him. So. Generally, I'd, if I were you, I'd be building a dice pool that included your physical and your influence skill. Okay. And one attribute, one skill, that's the core of all your dice pools. Right, one but attribute, one if skill. If you want to, you can use this trigger, uh, and that would give you, for the cost of a plot point, a another influence dice. Okay. Um... How do I do? I use because I've got six influence and I've got this crude mm. uh, distinction. Do I use the D8 for crude instead of that D6 for influence? No, you could um, just well. You you just demonstrated you were being crude by telling him to um, go around off, <laughs> rat off. I think <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, you could use that as a D8, or if you wanted to, and it's you know if you in the early days of the scenario. It can be tactically useful to say, well, actually, I'll roll that at a D4, and then I might end up winning a plot point out of it by taking a complication if things go badly. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. So okay, so you're rolling a physical D10, yep. your influence D6, yep. and your D4 for being crude. Okay. You've also got... You've got a speciality, haven't you? What is your... What's your influence speciality? Intimidation, yeah. Intimidation, right? So that gives you another d6. Okay, excellent. Uh, then, me. I just need before you do that though, I yep. need to set the stakes by rolling my dice. Okay. And uh, I just have to remember who these guys are. And then I assume it's the higher the better. Don't roll any ones. Um, 
and yeah, higher the better. Don't roll any ones. And I'm just trying to remember who these thugs are. There we go. So I'm going to roll these. Uh, uh, this is a. I'm going to roll a d6 and a d8 to set the stakes. This is just a. A thug, uh, and seven. We've got a seven. So that's your basically. No matter what size pool, Dave, you roll. Yep. You generally, only choose your two stop stop top score top scoring dice. There are certain triggers you can do where you throw another one into the mix, or you can spend a plot point and just take the third highest scoring dice as well. How uh, many plot points do we have? To get things over. Anyway, uh, so. 11 is the number you've got to beat with your points. Okay. And how many plot points do we get at the start? Yeah, you get one each to start off with. Okay. Right. And I'll I you get one for each of you. I shall roll my dice now then, see what these come up with. Uh, and I've got... <laughs> okay. I've got two ones and a ten and a two. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. So your ten and your two mean you have intimidated him. Yeah. But your two ones mean that there's a complication. Okay. okay. Now I get to choose a complication. I also get to give you a plot point. Every time you get a complication, you get a plot point. Okay. So you get two plot points here because we've... So I'll have three in total now then. So you've got three in total. Yeah. But uh, I reckon a uh, complication now that will survive for the rest of the turn is... Uh, uh, angry locals. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I add that into my dice pools with um. Okay. Uh, with every roll I make. Okay, so uh, yeah, that guy is intimidated and backs off, but he's got some big friends, and they stand up, pushing their chairs back. Um, Mal. I'll do the same at that point. You you okay? Now, you might be expecting Monty, you might be looking to Monty to uh, stand up next to you and join in the fight. Actually, he takes one look at this, and Scarpa's saying, I'll meet you back at your ship. <laughs> I, I kind of look to him to speak, but no words come out of my mouth. Uh, Zoe, what are you doing? No, sorry, not you're not Zoe. Um, Kaylee, what are you doing? I'm staying out the way of this. <laughs> okay. I'm not and book, what are you doing? Book. Uh, I'm going to um, step up and walk forward to where these intimidating large locals are standing up, and I'm going to kind of get in between between them and Mal and Jane and make a conciliatory gesture and say, "Come on, my my children, this is, this is there is no need for this." Okay then. There's so... unpleasantness. We're all we're all just you know folks are trying to enjoy a drink. There is no need for this. That's a good bit of peacemaking. How are you going to do that? <clears throat> How am I going to do that? Using which? Yeah. Just talk, talk us through the dice pool you're going to create to do that. Okay, well, how many can I can I use? Um, you've got to use at least two, but in a way there's no top limit to the number of dice you roll. So Bear in mind, though, that the more dice you roll, the more chance you have of getting complications. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, my attributes, and I use social, which is an eight. Okay. And then uh, I've got an influence, a skill of influence of eight, with a a note against it which has alliance. And I, I'm not, I'm not going to kind of use my. Alliance knowledge to influence, but does the influence still just apply on its own? Can I just use that? Yeah, yeah. No, you, you, so if you were talking to an alliance officer now, you'd throw an extra d6 into that pool for that specialism, but because you're talking to a bunch of uh, locals here, they might be alliance sided because they're kind of anti brown coat you're recognizing. No, I'm not. But, um, but no, they're not like, yeah, they're not official, as it were. So you've got 2d8 there. Anything else that you. Think to lag in. You could you could throw in your D8 ships shepherd if you want. 
Yes, I'll put, we'll do that then because that's I'm trying to step in as a as a kind of neutral. Okay. Peaceful. Well, this time I'm going to set the stakes with two d8 because I've got the angry locals, uh, and I'm going to throw because at least a couple of these guys have stood up now. So I'm throwing four dice now: two d8 and two d6. Okay, so you, so I'm, I've got three d8 then basically. So you do, do yours first, yes? Okay, yeah. So I'm just going to roll that again because I've created far too many dice on my screen. Two d8, two d6, roll. Okay, so I'm taking the top two of those, a nine. That's all you've got to get to um, to try and keep the peace. Okay, I'm rolling my 3d8 in that case. And I've got six, one, and a one, <laughs> <laughs> and a five. So, um... Said you should have kept out of this one, Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously the law would not allow me to stand back and watch the... Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to give you a uh, false profit. False uh, profit. What, what does that? What does that mean? So basically, the bloke who was talking to you before, who was a big fan of the local shepherd Wiley Carson, uh, has just stood up and said. This ain't your flock to go preaching to, he says, and uh, he uh, he's turned against you. That might stay with you a bit longer now. Um, however, you have caused a bit of peace here, and the the barman or the bar lady, I should say, uh, whose name I've just forgotten, but I'll uh, remember uh, Elizabeth Whistler. Uh, she, she's saying, thank you, Shepard. We don't want any fighting here, and we definitely don't want guns. Um, however, although you seem to have made the peace for a moment, these two guys are backing off. Somebody in the crowd says, we don't need no stinking brown coats here, neither. And somebody is definitely trying to rile the crowd up. How far away from me is that guy? Sorry, from who? Who's that? That's no, Jamie. Jamie. Um, uh, yeah, well, you're kind of... You've got Shepherd Book between you and these two guys that stood up when uh, when Jane tried to intimidate the guy, and it's somebody back in the, the dark recesses of the pub that's trying to cause trouble. Right. I'll, um, I'll kind of put my arm on Jane's shoulder and... Uh, Ask him why he's always out to create a recipe for unpleasantness, and uh, suggest we kind of leave because we've got other things to do. Hey, I, hey, I, I ain't a brown guy. He's just insult lead your face. So uh, that guy just didn't like his smell. So uh, are you a coward or what? <laughs> but the, this is what I'm saying out in, in public. But my intention will be to, uh, to to throw something at him. Maybe my drink, my my, my glass. Okay, as you're walking out, you mean? No, no, no. I'm, I'm kind of talking to Jane. Yeah, so you're, you're very publicly being the peacemaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <clears> with the <throat> intention of uh, turning around and slotting the guy with my with the glass in my hand. Okay. If I can't, if I can't reach him with my fist. <laughs> so having said that very peaceful thing to Jane, you throw your glass, um, and I guess that would be a physical... And a throw. Um, just to be clear as well, just before I throw it, I finish the drink. Okay. <laughs> just spit in it first. Okay, you finish the drink. You've got physical eight, I believe, and throw four. Yes. Um, anything else you want to add into that dice pool? Um, doesn't look like there's much relevant there, is it? Trouble magnet. Step up one of your complications to reroll a die. So anyway, yeah, so a two d eight and a d six to hit him. So the stakes I've set are five. Surely you can manage that. With d eight and a d and a d four to throw. Throwing is not one of your 
top skills, Mav. <laughs> I'm glad I finished my drink. <laughs> right, you can. Uh, you're going to get that complication anyway. Um, but you can. Oh, <laughs> you can step one up to re-roll it if you choose to. Okay, I've put the uh, angry locals up to twelve here. <laughs> I think my drink was spiked. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Generally, uh, you guys always get to go first. Um, but what I'm going to move into now is what we call an action round. Uh, and I get to choose who goes first uh, straight away. But after that, uh, the person who goes first chooses the person who goes second, and the person who goes second chooses the next person, and so on. So to encourage you guys to be proactive. However, this time, I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm going to, um, having been provoked in this fashion, the angry locals are going to take a pop at the two people closest to them, and one of those is Shepherd Book, and the other one is Mal. So, a couple of angry locals, now at D12, D8, and D6, uh, attempt to take you out. Uh, first of all, Shepherd Book. <clears throat> and, oh, actually, no, I've done that wrong. Because, because they're acting, uh, Shepherd, you have to... Um, you actually have to set the stakes. You're you're the defender here, so. So I, do, I roll first then. Yeah. Um, so do I? They're basically just coming to physically attack me with no weapons. No, just their fists. So do I get to then choose which again which attributes and skills I use? Yeah. At my defence, so I use my physical attribute, which is a d8. Uh, I've got fight of ten. Okay. Um. What else? Might just be those two. Yeah, I think so. Nothing else I've got even slightly relevant with is it is it on higher than a four, so I probably don't know. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go with those then. So it's an eight and a ten. So I've got five and a six, eleven. Five and a six, eleven. Uh well their roll beats you. So um, oh. effectively you can be taken out. This this punch can knock you out unless you choose to spend a plot point and take a physical complication to stay in the fight. There's no honour in being taken out. One of the or there's no dishonour, I should say, in being taken out. It's very difficult to die in this game. Um, taken out means you That's go flying. Do I have Do I have a a pool of plot points already that I can? You've got one. Everybody starts with one. So I could spend it by one that I've got. I think I'll just get taken out then. And let, let, if they start it, and can finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, get to, I'll, just, I'll just go you down. Go flying across the bar then. Um, Mal, the other one, uh, another one's about to punch you. So again, you set the stakes, please. All right. Um... D8 physical and a D8 fight. Okay. Anything else you want to add? You could. Um, <laughs> this is where you could, you know, bring in an extra D8 or an extra D4 with your veteran of the unification war distinction. <laughs> uh, or indeed, you could do this as things not going smooth. So. You, uh, oh, okay. I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll bring in another D8 in with my veteran of the Unification War. Okay. So, roll your dice. Four, five, two. Four, five, and two. So you choose the top two of those. I guess that's a nine. Yeah. 
And I'm going to roll again. And he gets 14. Um, I think this add-on is glitched. Sorry? I think your add-on is glitched. <laughs> <laughs> Well, these are very angry. You've managed to roll these locals. So again, you've got the option now. Um, you can get punched and get taken out, or Malcolm Reynolds doesn't get knocked out. So yeah. <laughs> well, not until next round, anyway. <laughs> okay, so you could. Um, you got five to beat there. You could spend a plot point and bring that third dice into the into your total. So you got 14. What did I get? No, sorry, hold on. I don't have 11, and you still have beaten me with 14. You got... 11. Yeah, yeah, 11. Well, then I, I you could also use your trouble magnet, um, step up a complication, and... Oh, well, you haven't got a complication, really, to step up. Our angry locals are about as angry as they can get now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's some birds outside that get angry as well. <laughs> so you, I think you, I think you're going to have to uh, take a D6 injury and stay in the fight then. Okay, that sounds fair. Okay, so and you roll that or plot point. Removed plot point. Yeah. Plot point removed. You've spent that plot point on doing that. So now, Mal, you have got an injury of um, D6. Uh, and a black eye. <clears throat> so what's the what's my unconscious limit? Uh, well, if you if that if that com that physical complication gets stepped up to twelve uh, beyond 12, then you're definitely out. Right. right, Kaylee, are you doing anything or are you getting out of here? Yeah, although can I just check a rules question? Yeah. Sorry, was your previous role the D6, D8, D12? Uh, yes. Then that complication, shouldn't it be a D12? Why is that? Because I thought that was how it worked for complications that are preventing you taking getting taken out. Sorry, I'm not understanding. I'm I'm willing to um, willing to be corrected, as it were. But no, no, this, this is me remembering half remembering the system. Um, oh I no, you're he... right. So yeah, Mal has to take a complication that's as high as the highest rolling dice, doesn't he? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Although I probably should have said that on a different roll. <laughs> Never mind, yeah. yeah, thanks, yeah, yeah thanks, nice one, teammate. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Mal, he's, you he's are... Uh, so uh, uh, when he's down anyway. I'm going to take that to not silly complication. Uh, so that's where you stand at the moment. Okay, Kaylee, I, I've given... Uh, I've now chosen to pass the ball to you, so you get your action, and then you right. get... Um, I'm going to run over to Book, who is unconscious, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try and calm these locals down a little, these angry locals, by pleading with them. Um, you just knocked out a shepherd! What? <laughs> okay. what are you out of your mind? <laughs> Okay, good. So how are you going to do that? Is that a social? I think it's going to be a social, um, influence. social influence. I don't think charming is really... You're not going to get that specialisation in, in this circumstance, I don't think. No. Do we walk into a bar full of Jubal Earlies or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just, you know, you rolled a few ones. <laughs> Is sweet and cheerful might good natured. Um, yeah, so good natured here. Spend a point to step up or double your social die. 
No, I just want to use sweet and cheerful. You want to use straight as a D8, do you? Because I've only got one plot point at this point. Okay. Right then, let me. Um, oh, oops. Let me set the stakes then. So again, this is a this isn't a high stakes roll for you. Uh, sorry, I ought to explain the difference to everybody. So if you're doing an action that's likely to get you knocked out or shot or whatever, that's a high stakes roll and you get taken out of it. But because Kaylee's trying to do a kind of defensive thing here and protect somebody else, this isn't a high stakes roll for Kaylee. So she won't get knocked out in theory unless things go really badly. Um, so uh, I'm setting the stakes for you here. And right, okay. So... I've rolled a one now, and instead of, well, that's a jinx for me, but rather than give me a complication, what it does is give you guys an opportunity, Kaylee, to knock uh, our complication down a bit, the, you know, the one that already exists, the Angry Locals complication. Um, can I not, can I reduce any complication? Oh, or? you can reduce any complication, I think, yeah. Right, I'll reduce Mal's to D10. Okay. Given I sort of responsible for getting up to D12. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then 10 is what you've got to beat. I got 16. Oh, well done. Okay. So with a 16, that's five more than you needed. So you get your highest rolling dice there, which is a D8, as a big damn hero die which you can use later in the scenario. Make a note of that. Yep. Um, and you are, and in fact, I'm going to give you another bonus as well, and I am going to take the Angry Locals one down to D10 now because your words of sense and your sweet and good nature has, uh, has got through to these angry <laughs> fellows. Uh, so... Angry Locals has gone down to D10. Uh, okay, and who do you want to go next? Um, while in character, I want this fight to stop. I think it's time for Jane to hit somebody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dave, what do you Yeah, I, I do feel I'm going to be completely at odds to uh, what Kaylee's trying to do. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's a tussle, after all. So I'm going to whack the guy who whacked Shepard. Okay. Um... Uh, and I want to whack him so hard that he'll be uh, eating corn on the cob without his teeth for a few years. <laughs> so, um, physical for a D10 then, fighting for a D10. Now, let me just, you being Jane, I think it's worth me saying that I'm going to set the stakes. Yep. Uh, so let's do that first. Uh, and that is D8, D, oh no, not D12 anymore. D10. The Angry Locals. And a D6. So, uh, oh, it's a, it's a tough one to beat there. It's a tough one to beat. And one of the things you could do, given that you're Jane and you've got a few plot points, and just to demonstrate what we're talking about, if you wanted to pick up a bar stool and whack somebody in the face with that, then by spending a plot point, you get a D6 for that bar stool. You've created an asset. Okay. Um, can I also use my crude uh, distinction in this one to hit them somewhere where it hurts for example um, yeah you could do that exactly could, could I could I for example get a uh, pool cue that's standing next to me and whack him in the nuts with it okay it would be a deep you'd spend a plot point for your um, uh, for the pool cue for the pool cue yep and you get that as a d6 so it'd be a physical d10 your fight D10. D10. D8 for the crude go at the nuts, and a D6 for the instrument you're using. And I need better than 14 and no ones. Okay, I've got uh, two eights, a seven, and a three. So that's 16 with no ones. 16 versus the 14, so you don't get a big damn hero guy, but you do take the guy out. Cool. <laughs> that's what I like to see. Right, now. And then I'm going to say, anybody else want to punch a shepherd and look at the locals? 
Right, well, it's, it's kind of the next round, but I'm going to let you um, have that next round. Um, uh, and, and, and kick off that. So you want to make, a, make an intimidation roll, then that is cool by me. So okay, again, yeah. I'll set the stakes for that one. And it's pretty much the same dice I used before. So eight, actually, this is now... There's about three others that are causing trouble. So I'm going to get six dice, uh, three D6, and a D10 for the angry. And remember, I own. Ah, right, okay. So 11 is the score you've got to beat. But you'll notice now you've got an opportunity to take down that angry local's uh, complication yep. down to... Uh, oh, it's D10, D8, D6. Okay, so I roll... So, seeing I'm intimidating, so I can use my physical presence, so that's a 10. Then influence yeah. 6. With my intimidation yeah. speciality, is that another 6? That's another 6. And then crude, D8. No, well, actually, you're not being crude at this point, are you? saying, does anybody else want to punch a shepherd? Um, okay, okay. Can I can I use mercenary then? Seeing I don't um, look pretty. Yeah, given that you're looking pretty mean, yeah. And I've just flattened one guy. Okay, so I need to beat E11. Yeah. Okay, I've rolled a six, four, eight, and two. So six and eight is fourteen, and no ones. Okay. Well, I think you manage to have made everybody else um, suddenly stop in their tracks. Okay. No, no, come on, come on. I didn't mean it that way. I mean, come on, who wants to hit the shepherd? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to stop fighting. <laughs> oh, I don't care if you're wearing wings, even angels by the dust. Even angels by the dust Oh, some might say something's wrong with me But baby, it's the little things Oh, baby, it's the little things